I breathe from my diaphragm. So I'm scared that it's gonna like affect something. You'll be fine. Is your name Gaten Matarazzo? Yes. Are you 16 years old? I am. Do you play the character Dustin in Stranger Things? I do. Are we all calibrated? Yep. Ready to go. Then let's get started. Okay. First thing we'll talk about? Stranger Things. When you first read the script, did you think the show would be as big as it is? No, I hoped, obviously, but I, we not a lot of us had like the greatest amount of uh, hopes for it really blowing up just because it was a very small production and uh, this is before like a lot of Netflix shows were even coming out so this is like only a couple really I think Orange is the New Black was the big one at the time and it was like oh what if it's one of those what if it's one of those and we're like oh come on guys let's take it back a notch. Do you ever get stopped by fans when you leave your house? Someone did come to my house once I was watching a movie with my girlfriend and, and all of a sudden I hear a knock on the door I thought it was like I don't know if it was like my brother coming home from school or something. I opened up the door and there were these two little kids and I'm like, oh, Girl Scout cookies, yes. And <laughs> I was so excited. And they're like, are you Gaten? I was like, yeah. I didn't know if they were gonna give me like a letter or something. They're like, can we get a picture? And I was like, and all of a sudden I find out the next day that my, they went to my grandma's house and she invited them in for like coffee. Cause that's just my grandma, it's hilarious. I don't know, I don't know if like they had mutual friends or something, or I don't know how they figured it out, but like they, my grandma invited them in. Which is like something you should never do, but they were great people. Do you get a lot of fan mail? Yeah, a lot of fan letters. I can't always read them though, cause I mean there's a lot of, uh, they just pile in, like there's not always a lot of places to put them. There's like a part of my room, it's just like a bunch of like letters and like paintings and stuff. I look like a sociopath that's in love with myself because like there's a bunch of paintings like of me that are like next to my bed on my, on my dresser. And it freaks me out when I'm looking at them, but a lot of them are so great. I just want to keep them because they're so talented and people put so much time and effort into them. But a lot of times it's hard to read all of them or keep all of them. Have you ever met someone who has a tattoo of you? Yes, I have. I've seen pictures of people with uh, my face on there. I've actually signed someone's arm before and they came back the next day and it had, they, they had tattooed it to themselves. Does that freak you out? A little bit. Yeah. Feeling excited for the new season? Yeah. Will one summer really change everything? In ways. Does Netflix train you how to answer when people ask you for spoilers? Actually, yeah. They send in like a guideline before press junkets and they say what you can say, what you can't say. So let you know exactly how to handle certain situations. But I mean, we, we've done it for a while, so I feel like we're pretty good at it. So, can you give me some spoilers? No. Does one of the main characters die this season? Yes. Will this character, Will, ever catch a break? Yes. Lou? Do you know what's going to happen in the final season? No. I know that I know that they have certain things planned. Uh, I don't know what they don't usually like to express that. Do you know any spoilers for other Netflix shows? No, no, I don't. Does Netflix punish you if you spoil Stranger Things? I don't know, because I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I sure hope not. Do you ever read fan theories about the show on Reddit? Uh, yeah, sometimes I do. Sometimes they're cool. Sometimes they're accurate, and sometimes they're just lame. <laughs> you mind if I read you a couple? Please. Do you think it's possible that Will has psychic powers that can open the gates to the Upside Down? Maybe. That'd be really cool. He's got something going on. Have you ever pondered the idea that Hopper might actually be Eleven's dad? No. I've never really liked that theory. There's a lot of stuff, people that think that, but it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, you look back to his daughter looks nothing like Millie, and the, the age doesn't match up with the with the time, with how much he's aged from that point, and uh, it just wouldn't make any sense. I think it'd be far-fetched, and Eleven would recognize him. If you could, would you bring back Barb from the Upside Down? I wouldn't, uh, simply because I think her death was essential in demonstrating that nobody was safe. Even the most innocent, likable, um, relatable character uh, couldn't be saved from what's going on, and I think that really resonated with audiences with audiences. And I think that's why they want her to come back, because they liked her so much, and because she didn't deserve it, and it wasn't fair. That's why she died. Sam, do you think the Upside Down is actually an alternate universe? Yeah. That's interesting, though. There's a lot of theories that uh, it might be from the future. 
Do you think the Upside Down could be part of the multiverse? What do you mean? Like maybe it's part of the Marvel multiverse? Oh, something like that. Um, I don't know about that. I think that if they want to keep it within the, uh, the Stranger Things universe uh, as a whole. Um, but, uh, but maybe. That'd be interesting to think about. I think it's definitely a lot closer to home than we might believe, or, or maybe even a lot further. I think there's a lot more about it we don't know, and I'm really excited to see where they take it to see if we can learn more about it. Do you think it's possible that Riverdale is the upside down, and that's why Barb's there? <laughs> I don't think so. No, but that'd be, that's interesting to think about. Did you like your character's makeover at the end of season two? I wouldn't personally <laughs> dress up that way, but I think it was very fun. It actually didn't take that long to, uh, to do, but it was very fun getting to dress up like that, and I enjoyed it a lot. So you've never worn that hairstyle in regular life? I've, well, I mean, I have, technically, during the shoots, but uh, I wouldn't use it as a stylistic choice, no. Lou? That one was largely deceptive. What? Oh, goodness. Who would you say is a better mom, Joyce Byers or Steve Harrington? Probably Joyce. She never stops trying. She never stops uh, wanting what's best for her kids, and she doesn't care if she puts herself in harm for that. And Steve's a very good protector, but it seems like he's always the one, in a way, he seems to bring them towards the trouble, even though like he should probably keep them back. I feel like every time, I mean, of course he doesn't, never really wants to bring them there, but when he's there, like he helps them out in that sense. But I think Joyce, I think Joyce would die for any of the kids. I think Steve might too now, but before, maybe not. Do you ship Hopper and Joyce? I do. Yeah, I think that's a really cool. I think it's an interesting plot line. I think that would be really cool if they went further with that. I do. Season 3 comes out July 4th, 7-4. Seven, 7 plus 4 is 11. Oh my god. <laughs> Coincidence? Most likely. Let's move on to your co-stars. You and the other Stranger Things cast seem to get along very well. Very well. Do you all have a group chat? Um, we, we have several, I guess. I think there are some depending on like what's going on, because sometimes there are press junkets that happen with there's just three of us, so we have a group chat, and then there's group chats with all of us. Or, uh, and we don't really use it a lot, especially when we're in Atlanta, because we see each other for like 10 hours a day every day. We don't really need to text. Is there any one person who texts too much? No, actually. We don't text each other a lot. I think we should. Is there a collab in the works between your band and Finn Wolfhart? Uh, in my mind, there is. <laughs> That'd be really cool. I'd like that. And even if it wasn't, even if we didn't make like music together, at least like a show together would be a lot of fun. I think that would be great. Do you know who would win in a battle of the bands? I'm gonna say them right now, just because they have more original music and they all play instruments. Really? And yeah, it's probably like the only reason. I'm gonna say them now, but who knows? Because I mean, we're still making our stuff, so we gotta like establish our sound first, I think. But someday. 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 <laughs> Would you say that this man, Joe Keery, mm. is more of a heartthrob than this man, Digger Montgomery? Mm. No, I wouldn't. For some reason, I just feel like, I don't know why, but for some reason, like, every one of the female friends that I have have asked me about Dacre before. I wouldn't. <laughs> How did they stack up against this guy, Noah Centineo? Uh, my girlfriend's in love with him. She tells me all the time. I don't know. His name comes up more with that topic, so I'm going to say him. <laughs> Can you tell the difference? between the two Duffer brothers? I can, and I know exactly how I can. Um, Matt always ha Matt has this gray streak in the front of his hair. It's natural, he doesn't know why he has it, and he's always had it. That's how I told him part to begin with. But eventually, like, you just start to like decipher certain features. I don't even think you even realize what they are. And like, eventually, it's just like, it's not even a question anymore. At first, sometimes I'd mix them up, especially when it was like night shoots. So you're sure you can tell them apart? Not if you show me like when they were like kids. If you show me like pictures when they were like students, probably not. But now, definitely. 
Which one is this? Uh, that's Ross. I believe that's Matt. No way. It's not Matt. That's not Matt. It's Ross. Is that Matt? Oh, sorry, buddy. Does the cast ever go out to karaoke together? They did karaoke for the season two rap party, and I couldn't attend. I had to get out of there really quick. I, I was upset about that, but uh, I've never gone to do karaoke with them before. I'd like to, though. So you've done karaoke on your own? I have done karaoke on my own. You have a go-to song? <sighs> I think it depends. I, I'm, in, I'm a musical theater guy, <laughs> so sometimes I'll sing that, and usually people don't really care about me singing musical theater, because it's in no way fun to listen to at karaoke, but it's fun. Who would win in a karaoke off? You. Ooh. Or Millie Bobby Brown. I don't know. I might say her. She seems like much more upbeat and energetic about the whole thing, so I think she might like be a little bit more comfortable doing it. Whenever I do it, I actually go to try and sing as best I can, and that's not what karaoke is for. Is that I have fun, but I'm like, I, need, I have something to prove. I don't. It's karaoke. What about a rap battle? Oh, she totally went. For sure she totally went. I can't rap to save my life. What about you? versus this person, Caleb McLaughlin. Mm. It's hard to say, actually. In karaoke, we're still saying? Yeah. I don't know. I think I might take him on. I think I might, I think I might take him on karaoke. But we have to actually have an official battle to see. Sounds like the gauntlet's I been th thrown. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I'm excited now. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about your life. So you've been auditioning since you were... Seven years old? That's right. Did you know at seven that you wanted to be an actor? Not in particular. Not particularly. I think it wasn't until I was about nine when I first actually got my first role that I realized it was like, oh, yeah, this is what I want to do. Have you ever bombed an audition? Oh, yeah. For sure. It's actually funny. One of the auditions that I bombed I actually got the role for. It's funny. I messed up on the script like three times. I went out of the room crying. I was nine, and I actually got the role. It's the first one I ever got. Is it true you played Gavroche in Les Miserables? That's true, yeah. Did you know that Nick Jonas also played that role? I did. I think Nick and Joe both played the part. Do you think your death scene was better than his? Actually, I've never seen his death scene. Oh, wait, no, that's not true. I have. I think that the, the way the scene in my production was choreographed was way cooler. I'm gonna say it beats Nick's. Nothing to do with performance, but the way it was set up was really cool. Do you think you make a convincing dying face? Yeah, I think it's, the key is just to relax every one of your muscles and just, it's not just about not moving, because when, when you think not moving, you tense up. When you tense up, it's unconvincing. So I think the key is to just relax, almost like you're sleeping, with your eyes open. Can you give us a sample? I'll give you a sample. So you're just, just going to tense up and... Okay, my head rolls back naturally, so... How's he doing, Lou? He's dead. <laughs> His heart stopped. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay. Do you have an older sister and a younger brother? I do. Do you feel like you get less attention as the middle child? Uh, not necessarily, simply because of the line of work I'm in. Not, I don't get less attention from my, from, more, more attention from my parents, obviously. They treat us both, all three of us equally. Would you say you need to be the center of attention? No, I don't like being the center of attention, actually. But you're an actor. I am. Um, I think the reason I act is simply just because it's so easy and so satisfying to get lost in somebody else. But I think that those who go into act the acting field to get attention are not going to make it far. I think if you're in it for the right reasons and you do it because of your passion, you do it because you love it, you're going to do fine. Lou? He is being truthful. I'm so proud that that was truthful. Yeah, nice. I'm glad that I didn't like get nervous for no reason. Do you think your parents have a favorite child? Probably. It's definitely not me. Do you still have to do chores? Um, there isn't much chore. I, we need to do chores. And like, I, we get yelled at for not taking out the trash and doing the dishes. We need to. I scoop out the litter box more than um, my brother and my sister do. We have three cats, so there needs to be a lot of scooping. And so I feel like I'm the one who scoops it 
the most. That's a lot of scooping. Just saying. 100% true. Yeah, it is. <sighs> you told Jimmy Fallon that a fire alarm once made you cry? It's true. I actually have a story about that. Um, I found out quite recently that, uh, well, my girlfriend is the grade, is a grade younger than me. She, or she was in second or first grade. She pulled the fire alarm. I was like, oh, that's funny. I cried in second grade about the fire alarm ringing and I fell out of my chair. She's like, wait, when was this? And we figured out that she was the one who pulled the fire alarm that made me cry. Do you cry a lot? Depends on the situation. I think I'm good at sharing my emotions. And I think what helps is sometimes, like, I'll just cry at night, just because you need to cry. I think everybody needs to cry. If you don't, like, a lot of stuff gets bottled up. I, I, there's nothing to be ashamed about it. I'm not ashamed of it. Can you cry on command? It's hard, but I've done it before. And it's weird because usually when I know I have to cry, I can't. But it's the times when I don't need to or when I don't necessarily think I'm going to when it happens. So Joe Keery told Glamour that you're one of the brightest young people he's ever met. That's very nice of him. Would you agree with that statement? I don't know. I think there. I know many people that I believe are smarter than me, and I know many people that have achieved m many greater things than me. I think I do pretty well in school, and I think I... I, like, I love learning. I love knowledge, and I like obtaining knowledge. But I think smarts is different. I think brains and being smart is different than knowledge. But I really appreciate him saying that. How are we doing? Yeah, this is a very truthful person. All right. Next category. Let's talk about <laughs> pop culture. So, you have almost 9 million followers on Instagram. I do. If acting doesn't work out, are you considering a career as an Instagram model? No. Do you have a Finstagram? I do have Instagram. I do. It's usually for my friends. I haven't posted on it in like a year, I think. It's been a while. I, I usually use it just so I can like post like random stuff that I see a lot. This is funny. Do you have the app that lets you know when someone unfollows you? No. I don't care. You know, you don't have to follow me if you don't want to. I guess sometimes people like it for for sometimes I don't post for like a month and a half and when I do post it'll be for some like something for my band coming up and so there's nothing really interesting going on. So I get why somebody would unfollow me. Have you ever used Facetune on any of your photos? What's that? So you don't know? Oh like Photoshop? No. I usually don't like to. There might have been something like for like uh well, I mean on there's photos of me like that have been Photoshop, like for like per, like promotion for like stranger things and stuff like enhancers like for like to make the, the quality look cooler but i wouldn't do that personally people like there's a running joke that i post like terrible like awful quality pictures of myself and of everything else <laughs> like i'll like like look up like a like an image offline i'll like screenshot it and then post it and that'll be my picture like Gaten, come on <laughs> you can do better than this like, you can definitely do better than that would you consider yourself to be part of gen z gen z yeah I, I'm not a, I don't think I'm a millennial. I think, like, by definition, I'm not a millennial. I think, like, after 2000 or 2001. I'm 2002. So I think I'm, like, the first Gen Z. Gen Zs are said to spend at least three hours a day online. Wow. Are you part of that group? Depends on the day. Usually when I'm sick or, like, sometimes on, like, rainy day weekends, I'll spend a lot of time on YouTube or Netflix and I'll, like, binge watch something. But if it's, like, social media and, like, stuff like that, no. At most, I'm on, like, five minutes, like every couple of days. Do you dab? Do I dab? Like the dance move? Not to be cool. If I ever do it, it's, 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 it's a spoof or a parody of, of the dab. Is lit part of your everyday vocabulary? Oh god no. It is when I'm joking around, but uh, nothing to be serious. I don't actually use the term lit as a way of describing a fun time. Be honest. Do you floss every day? My teeth? No. Or the dance? No. I have done it. And I've done it before. Because I'm actually pretty good at it. I don't like to. Oh, you're going to make me fall. <laughs> I don't know if Lou would be happy about that. You into video games? I am. I'm into video games. Do you ever play online multiplayers like Fortnite? I don't. I'm terrible at it. I like camp Call of Duty campaigns and stuff. I love RPGs like Skyrim. I love, I love Spider-Man. Uh, Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead 2's. I always keep going back and forth between Red Dead 2 and Spider-Man. Like, they're two of my favorite games. Is there anyone who, if you saw them in real life, you would fan out over them? Oh, I'd fan out over some people. Uh, I got pretty nervous when I met Mark Hamill. 
Understandable. That was that's pretty that's that's respectable. No, I mean he was great. Such a nice guy. You turned sixteen years old this year, right? Uh, yes, I'm turning. I, I turned sixteen last year. I'm turning seventeen this September. Did you know you're legally allowed to quit school at sixteen? Oh yeah. Have you considered it? No. I want to finish. I, I've started senioritis, and I'm just finishing my junior year, so I'm probably gonna be sick of it. But next year, all my classes are all fine. So. Do you see yourself going through a rebellious stage at any time? I don't know. I feel like if I were going to have a rebellious stage, I would have had it by now. <laughs> um, I might just... I feel like I sometimes I might feel like I'm growing up a little too fast, or I might want to grow up a little too fast. There are things that I'm like, I just want to stop being a kid for now. But I realize that I just need to accept what I have now and know that once it's gone, I'm not going to get back. So i got to see the positive in it. Because then if I see the positive when I don't have it, I'm going to miss it. Would you consider getting a face piercing? God, no. What about a tattoo? Yeah, I want to get a tattoo. There's uh, a tattoo that my uh, sister has. It's an upside down triangle that represents um, my brother, me and her. And so that each corner represents us and then a different design of their preference. Uh, in the middle she has flowers and I want to get one on like, the back of my shoulder or something. Uh, it's something small because I, I still have to do shows and acting and stuff. That uh, with uh, our zodiacs on it, and my brother's gonna get one as well. Do you know what you'd do if you really wanted to make your parents mad? <sighs> I'm trying to think. I'm, there's probably a bunch. I do stuff that I don't intentionally mean to make them mad, and I get them mad. Sometimes, like, I forget my place a lot, and so sometimes, like, when they tell me to do something, like, or I'll do it, or, like, when they, like, get mad at me about something, I'll start to yell back, and that's not okay at all, <laughs> and, then they, and then they'll freak out about it, and then I'll realize, I'm like, I shouldn't yell at my parents ever. That's a terrible thing to do. Oh, God. And then I'll, I'll regret it later, and then I'll apologize, and then it'll be good. And then eventually, like, <laughs> something will happen again. That's just, that's just how it works. How's he doing, Lou? He is being truthful. He is absolutely pissed off his parents. <laughs> yeah. Love you, Dad. Final question. Okay. At any point during this interview, did you lie and we didn't catch you? I don't think so, no. You're an open book. I'm an open book. I just found out that I'm an open book. I don't, I don't lie a lot, apparently. <laughs>